my angels, welcome back to Vlogmas. We have got a very special guest today, and it is all to do. go, go, go. So mommy and I are in full Christmas prepping mode. So we're gonna hit Waitrose and we're gonna hit it large. We are literally doing our full Christmas shop to get all of those delicious, festive, scrumptious, unctuous bits and pieces. So we've literally got to go. So we're gonna hit Waitrose, get everything we possibly need for the next week all the recipes, all our family traditions and then we're going to go to John Lewis to get the last bits and pieces, a few little gifty bits, some trinkety bits, some uh, stocking fillers, Pardon? got the list, got the list, so let's go. <laughs> Just arrived at Waitrose. Plan of action is what? <laughs> We've just been chatting through the strategy. I feel like it's going to be a bit of a scrum and a fight for the Brussels sprouts. Yeah, so we can get a few icebergs in Brussels today. Red cabbage. <gasps> Let's do this. <laughs> We're going in large. Do we need one each? <laughs> I'm doing as I'm told. <laughs> Okay, let's do this. I think this is one of my most asked for vlogs. What I buy and to just to do really normal things. So, you asked for it. <laughs> let's go and do the food shop for Christmas. First things first, carrots, parsnips and brussels. I, I think we need... Okay, all right, we're going for a browse first. Mummy's doing Christmas fruits. So we're gonna go with a few punnets of cranberries. Always essential at this time of year. Um, we want big oranges, definitely. Oh, this is so exciting. It's another trick. Oh, you lift up the bucket and get the ones at the bottom. Very top tip, you are here with a supermarket professional. <laughs> Right, I'm off to find the cauliflower. One of my favorite recipes at Christmas is definitely our cheesy leeks. So we're gonna need a fair few of these. Just wondering whether there's any bigger packets. Or whether these are them. No, I think so. So I'm gonna dig, oh gosh, I'm throwing leeks around. Perfect. There we go. The leeks are in. We have secured the leeks. Now time to get the potatoes and the absolute favorite, my absolute favorite has got to be the King Edwards and they are perfect for gorgeous, golden, crunchy roast potatoes. So I'm gonna get two of those and then I need some gorgeous new potatoes for the potato salad. How many times can you say potato in one sentence? <laughs> Probably just won the award. Right, where do we have some gorgeous little, what do we think? Great for boiling or roasting. Oh no, these look gorgeous. So it's a choice between no, the- I think Lorat are lovely for it. Lorat for a potato salad? Um, I think so. Fabulous. In they go. Or are we going for three of them? Three, just to be on the safe side? Yes, perfect. Feeding some hungry men. Car and Smee. Am I seeing you buying shop-bought coleslaw? No, only for Marcus. Only for Marcus it. because he absolutely yeah. loves it. Apparently I don't make it, nor does Mummy make it from scratch, the way it tastes from Waitrose. So I beg to differ, of course, but yeah, Fruity deli coleslaw. style. Fruity coleslaw? No, he likes the, honestly, as basic as it gets. Okay, perfect. We'll go with this one then. 
Oh, I do love myself a little cheese snack. Mm, maybe a little bit too early. Maybe a bit too early for cider. <laughs> It has got to be one of my favorite things to do is actually go food shopping with my mother. She is so funny and she has such amazing ideas and the sense of different flavors that go together. And she's been at the Christmas trimmings for about 15 minutes. <laughs> so naughty. But look at all these gorgeous bits and pieces. I mean, we do make our own stuffing, but it always gives you really, really good ideas. I love this idea. I'm most certainly going to do a replication of those. Gorgeous. She's in the back. <laughs> we are actually cheating and we are going to buy the Waitrose Madagascan Vanilla Custard because it right is scrummy. Back. Right, we need to get right to the back. What is this? 24th, what is going on? One of the best things at Christmas is the extra thick Clementine and Cointreau cream. That's it's, if it's is. Survived. That's <laughs> exactly. Rather partial, also on top of a mince pie. Oh, so good. Okay, so whilst mummy and I are, are unpacking, this is a four woman job. We've got the quality street. Lovely lady doing the till. And then the lovely lady is actually helping us pack at the other end. And it is literally a four woman <laughs> operation. We have got this. pretty much everything we just have to pick up the meat from the butchers but we managed to find absolutely everything we needed so we're all stocked up and we are ready for Christmas and all of that delicious food and might I add I am going to be baking it and cooking it. well I should say we are going to be baking it and cooking it together in the car I am of course chauffeur as you know now <laughs> So we are now on the way home. Pray for us because we're now going to unpack this and uh, load it into the cupboards and the fridges. But I'm so excited. I don't know why. Maybe it's because we have these guys, but I'm just so excited for Christmas this year. Normally I feel quite overwhelmed with everything that we have to get done, but because we tackle it as a team, yeah. It's sort of, you know, mummy has her bits that she is just, I mean, even if I trained and trained and trained, there is no one that can cook a turkey like this woman here. Just what you do to that turkey, I mean, you must love it. It's all about massage, apparently. She, uh, <laughs> she massages, massages a turkey this and her jet I'm cooking the turkey. And I don't even know, I'm not sure I am. Yes, you are. Alistair's coming to help. <gasps> oh my goodness, I'm you guys have met my brother, him. Alistair. He is also very good with a big bird, as Mark and calls him. Bird. The bird. Marcus, Marcus is useless. La useless! I mean, I don't know what his mother was doing. Why yeah. did she not teach He's him how to so cook? Please, ladies, teach your children and your sons and your brothers and your nephews and cousins, if they're male, please teach them to cook because this is just getting ridiculous. I mean, he does make a banging bolognese, but apart from that, <laughs> nothing else. Beans on toast at three o'clock in the morning after two months. I think we to send him tequila. on a male cookery course. I, I think, think that's what I might idea. buy him for Christmas. Yeah. Uh, the Avenue Cookery Course. An Avenue Cookery Course for husbands. Yeah. So actually, I will leave that in the description box down below because it's the most amazing gift, even a wedding gift. And you can go on like, um, make the most amazing Darling, Sunday. You concentrate, you are driving. And I am going. driving. As I was saying, I will leave all the details in that description box down below because the Avenue Cookery School, no matter what it is, whether it's Asian food, Japanese, classic English Sunday roast. Bottomless um, brunch. Bottomless branch they do beef wellington anything that you would like to learn how to cook professionally they have these amazing courses whether it's an afternoon a day afternoon tea um, or even up to a week's course um, they offer it all so i couldn't recommend that enough Anyway, so we are going to go home, unpack everything. I'm going to be doing the dining room table a little bit later on this vlog. Do you remember when I got um, clamped in Wake 
going to his car park in Henley and I ran to the guy who was clamping me and it was very icy and I slid underneath my own car and I thought I'd broken my leg and I was so distraught and screaming at this guy. Were you and screaming in pain or were you I, actually screaming I, I at him? I was parked in John De Stefano's car park and it was a private car park, so I had to phone John. John Stefano is my godfather, by in, the way. In Barbados, and awesome. tell him uh, that to get this rock viler of a man, man off my car. Anyway, the whole thing was very exhausting on Christmas sort of Eve or whatever it was. Well, I love that story. How many years ago was that? Oh, back in the day. Back, in the, back day. in the day. My mother has always had. We used to have these. Famous Boxing Day parties. Yes, do you remember those? They were. I mean, have, why did we end up step. stopping? Why well, did we stop all that? It's just too much work. And, you know, we used to host for 30 to 40 people. And the decorations at my family home growing up, she was basically Mrs. Claus. We used to have, how big were the Christmas trees? Well, we used to have one in front of the house. Uh, and three on the balconies outside the house. The house. Uh, so that was just outside for Christmas trees. And then we had a Christmas tree in every in single every room we formal up. room when we were growing up and every single one had a different theme. Literally, it was something like Fortnum's. It was something out of a fairy tale. And now I want to pair everything back. Now she wants back. to do nothing! And I'm and like, uh-uh. Uh, no. That is not how I we do things in our household. The over to you, the so end. now it is my job to ensure that the Christmas fairies decorate the house accordingly. But trust me, it was mega. One year we we had this. You went absolutely wild and got this Christmas tree. How big was that Christmas tree? Oh my god, it was like it was like fifty foot. A fifty foot Christmas tree outside outside the house. We had like this central. Yeah, what kind of lights did we have on it? We had something They were amazing. They were just. Well, do you remember that? I, I remember that all of that. I and I remember Father Christmas used to bring my presents in the night. And um, I had stairs going into my bedroom when I was growing up. And I always remember Father Christmas always used to um, miss a step. And so. <laughs> My father would wake me up. And I turn on his one job. Put the pillowcases on the end of the children's beds. And, and uh, he'd probably have too much whiskey yeah. and uh, fall down the stairs. And I always used to have a little giggle with him. Oh, well, Christmas would swear a lot. <laughs> yes. Anyway, well, I'm going to make my mother feel a lot less stressed and turn this camera off. And we will see you when we get home. What is your problem? You're my problem. <laughs> <laughs> I will see you guys at home. <laughs> oh, the sunshine has just popped through just in time. Gosh, it is just such an exciting time of year, but an extremely busy one. Oh my goodness. Well, today is a particularly special one because mummy and I are going to be tackling the dining room. As a family, we always sit in here on Christmas day and we entertain. We have the most divine Christmas lunch and we always like it to look really special. Now, when I say that, I don't mean by going Going out and spending a fortune on new bits and hopefully if you have been watching my YouTube channel you will know that I treasure sentimental things and most of the time they are things that aren't high value there are things that I just treasure with so many memories and although we do have beautiful family silver that has been handed down we do also have some really tatty hilariously tacky bits and pieces that just make it for us as a family. So this year we have bought nothing new. The only thing that we have bought are the Christmas crackers and they are so special that I'm almost going to ask our guests not to pull them. Is that really terrible? Do you think I can ask people to do that? 
I don't know. I think people just get so excited on the day that they just go along with it, but they are just so beautiful and they are from Fortnum's. So I don't know whether we should get some a little bit more, how do I say, a little bit more affordable Christmas crackers to pull and then keep these for best and for years to come. Sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do we go all out and say it's Christmas only once a year and pull them or do we save them and be sustainable and keep them for every year. So as I said, today we've got all our bits out on the dining room table. It is looking somewhat bare and we are going to make it into the most beautiful Christmas extravaganza tablescape using all of our beautiful family bits that we have collected over, gosh, my grandparents, my parents, I would say 80 years? sounds crazy. Between my grandparents, my parents and Mark and I, there are some really, really special but hilarious bits and pieces and we're going to be sharing everything with you. So mummy is literally just about to arrive and again it's one of those family traditions that we always do. I can hear her. Hello! What on earth have you got? Oh that's beautiful. Is that the... Is that from Oka? Oh, fabulous. Yes, we do need to get some foliage from outside. The only thing that we have new is actually some fresh flowers. We don't have many of them, but we have a few berries that are gonna make it pop. Here's Mama. Say hello, hello. to everybody. <laughs> um, I'm just seeing if this will work. Oh, it I'm might not, not work. sure about it. I think it might work on the back bit. But, um, I think it would work over there. It's, is that the one we the bought from over? And then we put, um, we, we just put the little vases down the thing because it's the burgundy it's a, I'm not sure about it. No, I'm really not sure about it. I think it would look nice over there. And it would make that look slightly more Christmassy. Okay. But I think then we're going to be rocking too many colours. Anyway, so you guys have got the gist as to what we will be doing today. Having a bit of a mummy-daughter day, aren't we? Yes. We're both in cream. We've both got our Christmas pearls on. Mm. And let's do this. So first things first, we need some table runners. And at Christmas time, we always like to go burgundy in here. I just think the color lends itself so well to the beautiful colors that we have in here. We've got like dusky pink curtains, We've got this beautiful dusky pink, almost like plastery hand painted walls. And then with the artwork in here and the color of the floor and the color of the table, it just works really well. Now these are ancient, Pottery Barn. We are Pottery Barn fans. If you don't know about Pottery Barn, it is an American brand. I will leave it in the description box down below. And Mummy and I, we haven't been able to go for years. So I think that might have to be a little Christmas trip next year. What do you guys think? I'm dying to get to Williams and Sonoma and Pottery Barn oh, and have a good old hit for the next 10 years. Anywho, let's get this onto the table. So starting off any tablescape, make sure that number one, your table is um, in fact clean. And then what you can do is get all of your accessories out, lay them along the table, and just make sure that all the colors go together and then it's all tonal. Now, they don't have to be the exact tone of burgundy, but what I think is really important is that all the colors tone together beautifully. So, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna get these table runners out. Excuse me, mother, I thought you were going to come and help. <laughs> Right, okay. Okay, so it looks a bit bare and a bit basic at the moment, but you just wait and see how it begins to come together. So we are I think in I'm fact have to use this in here. ten people for lunch this year on Christmas Day, and then we have about twenty on Boxing Day. Boxing Day is always a little bit more casual. It's all the leftovers, it's the cold turkey, the hams, turkey sandwiches, all the potato salads, and we've got lots of friends of ours popping in for drinks. And just to be merry at this time of year. Right, are those straight? Uh, no. Not no. Not Why? It always looks a bit of a mess, this velvet. I know, but it looks um, great when it's, all, when it's all done. Let 
needs to be smoothed down your end of it. I will. Just got all the shizzle and nizzle. Ah, got the trees. We haven't got Kimberly this year to un unravel the trees for us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Next thing's next is to add the items that are slightly more chunky and that you know 100% that you want on the table. That might be a candelabra, might be candlesticks, might be a beautiful vase or something, a centerpiece for the middle of the table. We always use these double stemmed candelabras. Again, a beautiful family piece. So we always use those and they sort of go I would say three quarters down the table. This year, we're also going with red candles. Let's just see. Well, they're not red, they're, they're more, burgundy. They're like a mixture between, they're coming actually up on camera as cherry red, but they're not really. They're sort of like a dark red, almost burgundy. And again, they tone beautifully with the burgundy table runner. So those are going in there and Believe it or not, they fit yes. perfectly. And so often they don't, and you have to wrap, wrap, wrap them, them with either cling film or tin foil. Blue tack also works. A treat. Now, I think what I'm going to do, Mum, is I'm actually going to dot the trees first. And I'm going to pop. Yeah, it's always quite a good idea to put your. Your, your actual sort of decorations on, on, and then we work out where the fresh is going to go. Where the fresh on. is going to go in between. And one goes. What you've got to decide on is your centerpiece. Yes. I don't know whether to go with the huge granddad's trifid. I know. Um, which I'm never wild about. Well, it's just um, quite big. I think less is more. And you know, otherwise people can't see one another, and um, it all just gets a bit much. There's a, there's a little silver, uh, small silver bowl. Oh, it's actually that. a punch bowl, but uh, I've never used it as a punch bowl, and um, I really got picked it up in something like Argentina about 25 years ago. Oh my gosh, um, it's but amazing. It's, um, it's quite a good size for, for a middle of a table. See if you could find that. That'd yeah, be that would be good. But so the trees are on the table, and I think they look beautiful. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to just dot the reindeer. It's a continued addiction. We got these actually from Covent Garden Flower Market a few years ago. They always have really great little nicky nacky bits and they're also great value. I'm sorry, I seem to be fighting with the light, but hopefully, oh, I say hopefully, you can see the table behind us. So I'm just going to spend a little bit of time dotting these reindeer strategically down the table and make sure that they Look, what we need to do is unravel these a little bit, don't we? I know. Spent a little bit of time doing that. So there's three up there, mm -hmm. and there's three down here. Oh, right. I'm going to move the chairs out slightly. It will look an absolute bonsite until it all comes together. We need the, the, the tea lights. We do need the tea lights. We need the tea lights. We've got these gorgeous pomegranates. I did actually show these to you when I was unboxing the Christmas decorations and they are just stunning. So these burst open pomegranates with the sequins inside, they're beaded and they're almost pearlized. Well, they are pearlized. They're matching my outfit to perfection. I could have them as earrings. They're like little chandeliers. <laughs> but they are beautiful and we always pop them onto the table because they are just so special and something that we've had for absolute years. So they are going to also match those gorgeous trees to perfection. Where did the other ones go? There's one. There's one. There's one. There's one. There's there. And maybe pop that one in there. What are you doing? You're just having a bit of getting rid of candles that we don't need. Very true. Perfect. And then what else have we got that's going to look lovely? We have loads of these um, frosted pomegranates, but for some reason, I don't have any trouble. Now I'm going to pop on these, which actually are tree ornaments, but I just love the way that they look on the table. They're these wide structured baubles that are actually um, 
uh, hollow. So you can see through them, but they've got these enormous diamantes in them. My grandmother absolutely loved these. And although they look a little bit naff, they actually look really effective on the table itself. And they tie in with the colour scheme to perfection. So I'm leaving little gaps actually for where I think I'm going to place our, um, our fresh florals. And then I'm just going to keep dotting these around, making sure that they, oh gosh, these chairs are driving me nuts, making sure that they are all perfectly positioned down the tablescape. Now I'm going to pop down these gorgeous, I love these so much. They're like little snowflakes. Again, they are meant to be Christmas tree decorations. So that's what I'm saying. Christmas decorations are so versatile. You don't have to put them on the tree. You can also use them on a tablescape. And although this is looking a little bit basic at the moment, trust me when I say that when we keep adding things and then we add the florals, we add the placemats, we add the napkins, the napkin ring holders, all of the beautiful glassware, the cutlery, and then finally the piece de la I think are going to be these exquisite crackers. This is going to be a beautiful tablescape. So let's keep going. <laughs> we have a few more Christmas decorations and I think these are so sweet. They've got little reindeers in them and they're almost like snow globes but they light up. I actually need to get more batteries for those so I need to replace those and I'm also going to take these little ribbons off the top of them just so that they sit beautifully down the table. So I've only got three of those so I'm going to have to be quite strategic in terms of where I place them but in floristry you always work in threes so I think they're going to work perfectly. Right, I was going to go and get the um, uh, uh, tea lights yeah. so I can I'm not sure here. about the gold. I think we just use the red and the burgundy. Oh, we've got a wig pig. We've yeah, got a wig pig. Another unreliable willy. Ah, Terrible person. He's Santa's helper. Grandma. Do you want to come see her later, one? everybody? I had those for years. Where are the rest of them? I know, those? well, that's what I just said. We had loads of them. Yeah, Are you saying hello? Mr. Santa's a helper, but he's a bit of a tinkler. We've got loads of these. And he's partial to tinkling on the tree. Darling, where are the rest of those? I know. Well, we need to get up and get them. We need to get back into the attic. Yeah. Back into the attic. So oh, is this a help? And the rocking Santa that we can't find. I know. He's hiding. No, we've got major unreliable weight okay. now. All right, I'm off to get the uh, tea lights okay. um, and the big tea lights. Right, I'm going to keep working yes, my way you down can, here. You, you, come on, boys. Everybody out. Go with Grandma. Okay, now, yes, I'm going to keep working my way down with these. I don't know whether I should take these off or whether I should keep them on because next year I might decide to pop them on the tree and then I don't have that option. I think I'm going to keep them on. I don't think guests are going to be horrified that they've still got their little ties on. So these are going to have to go sort of really quite um, central down the table. It's now time to add the beautiful little tea lights. And again, these work perfectly. These actually came from India Jane. They were two pounds. I would actually say for a beautiful little tea light like so, that's gonna last you years should you look after it, two pounds 50 each is not bad. So I'm now going to dot the little tea lights down the table and then I think it's time to go into the scullery and make the florals for the tablescape. And then we can kind of get a real good understanding as to how full it looks and whether we need to add the big family triffet. I love it. I've shared it with you before. It's absolutely beautiful. It was my grandfather's. My father absolutely loves it and my mother loathes it. <laughs> so it's quite difficult as to Oh gosh. Perfect. Who you found those? Um, I got the tea lights. They arrived from tea lights. for you. Fabulous. Yes. Um, these I always think look lovely. But they, they do. They need to be polished. polished. They do need to be polished. Okay. But Perfect. Um, I think we'll keep those as backup for yeah. maybe over here. 
Yeah. Um, if we want, to, if we need to add extra flowers. Perfect. Good I'm plan. not sure about the. Uh, I think these are lovely. Mm, not on the table. But not the not the Thinned. not the nutcrackers. No, I think they look lovely. Do you not think they look Every time enough? I go outside, I get the wind in my eyes, and I just get this water and I driving me mad. Okay, well I'm going around with the tea lights, just strategically placing them. I don't want to fill it up let's, too much because we've yes, still got the fresh to come down. The fresh should just pop it out though. I mean I'm not sure about these. I don't anymore. think um, I don't think that you want to put so much fresh on that it goes over and by boxing day it all looks horrible. So my plan is to go to the scullery and use these beautiful holly and ivy gorgeous silver vases to have the fresh flowers in them and we only bring them out at Christmas obviously because they have got gorgeous holly and berries on them and this one has ivy they're just such special pieces and it really makes a tablescape pop so i think we are going to pop them what do we think we might need to actually move the trees slightly along or do you want to have them sort of one there and one there i'm not sure i like no, that no 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 one no. needs to go sort of there yeah, i would think i think they need to go yeah. to trees in between that trees and go in and then, and then a centerpiece there okay so you want them to go there and there i think so with flowers and then what's going to go we need we need something do we use the amaryllis in the mm. middle and create height or do we use the family silver piece and then we don't have to use as much fresh florals in here and we can um, save that some. silver bowl. I bought it in this Oh, perfect. Oh, this is a punch bowl. Yeah, just, just but this see. will take up quite a yeah, lot. Yeah, well, you can, you can pad it in quite a lot of florals. You could, you could, so people can see one another. I think that's probably better. Okay. Would you like it? I do like it. Um, I'm not in love with it. You've got these that could go down at the ends. Okay, I think it's getting quite busy. <laughs> Yes, I think it is. It's a nice, the nice pieces though. I think um, what we need to do is go and look at the flowers. Again. I think we now need to go and look at the flowers because once we have all of the beautiful placemats and then we have the family silver that's going to go over the top of it, the napkins, napkin ring holders, the crackers, all the glassware and the cutlery, I think then it might possibly look a touch overwhelming. So, uh, let's go and I think we're better off to stop. We're going to go and have a little look at the florals. I'm going to pop them all together into those beautiful ivy and holly vases. I've had these for years. They're little uh, mirrored stars. And I think they look quite sweet with a little votive on, on the top of it, little tea light, and then it just reflects on the table and reflects the light. Because let's face it, in reality, on Christmas Day, we never really sit down for our main lunch until about four o'clock. It's true, it's true. Because we are too busy getting everything ready and everything getting it all together. And drinking, we also yeah. do love a good drinky poo. And we have a few hours, well, to be honest with you, we start cooking, gosh, at what, 8 a.m. in the morning? And it's yeah. Christmas day, so we do have to have a few little drinky poos. And then when we have guests arriving, and there's so many different family traditions. So you do we... need candlelight on a table. 100%. Winter at four o'clock in the afternoon. In the bleak midwinter. <laughs> Frosty winds may blow. <laughs> Officially lost it, and no, we haven't had a drink today. Okay, oh, these are nice. No, mummy, I just no, no. You do have the tendency to be a touch like grandma, and she never Ooh. knew when too much was too much. Right. I'm going to stop faffing with the table, and I'm going to go into the scullery and start putting together these beautiful floral arrangements. So. Let's go to the scullery. So now in the scullery and we have all of our fresh florals and Flowered have been so kind and they have sent the most beautiful florals for our tablescapes. So we have some gorgeous pink roses for the dining room, some stunning anemones. I mean, look at how beautiful they are. Some of them have opened and some of them are still closed, so it's perfect. We have some red berries because it wouldn't be Christmas without them. And then some beautiful grand pre white roses and then Nem has also sent some very long stemmed um, amaryllis 
and look at how stunning they are absolutely beautiful so i think for oh whoopsie daisies so i think for the dining room i'm going to use the anemones just because they've got slight hints of pink in them and then i'm also going to use these beautiful blush pink grand prix roses just because i think the colors will blend into those gorgeous blush pink curtains and the walls so I'm going to be using the gorgeous holly and ivy little vases here. I've got them filled with water already. And then a little trick that I like to do using roses is actually use floral frogs. And they are these very spiky little devices that you pop right at the bottom. And it just means that you can stick the stems into them and those roses then won't move. It will be perfect. So those are ready to go. I'm now gonna prepare the flowers and just make sure that the stems are cut to the right length and then create the beautiful floral arrangements. <laughs> As you can see, I'm spending a little bit of time strategically placing the florals in, and I'm actually going to use six roses per vase, just because I think they can take it, and we do actually have enough. And as you can see, I'm actually just teasing and spinning these roses open slightly, just so that they look slightly more relaxed and pulled open, just so they're not really tight, and they look absolutely beautiful and the best thing about that floral frog at the bottom is that you can really sort of like squidge the stem into them and place them beautifully so they look fantastic then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get a little bit of foliage and then just fill in the gaps and I think they look stunning oh, oh. so Steve has been very kind and he has chopped us some berries some holly look how fabulous that looks the holly's lovely but we could probably put those above the pictures I think, the holly. I think so too so do you think those gorgeous little berries and they've also almost got slight hints of pink in them yes. I think they're perfect but be very careful because they've got thorns in yeah. them these are quite rose are hips quite stunning rose hips um, I think those for the centerpiece. Should we yeah. bring this whole bucket through? Because you yeah. don't want to carry. I don't want to carry the berries uh, over these the carpets. And those to put around, they drop. Everywhere. They do, and the carpets. Yeah. It's expensive. But what I do think we could actually take out the dried berries out of the kitchen arrangement and put in fresh. Leave yeah. those there, and I'll redo the one in the kitchen. Yes. Gorgeous. Oh, and look, the wreaths look so beautiful. I feel like we need to do an updated house tour of Christmas oh, decorations. I know, look at this. I'm going to do a full house tour once we are finished so that you can see everything. But these are the amaryllis that have just flourished to perfection. It is absolutely stunning. Always super important to just spin the arrangement around and just make sure that every single angle <laughs> sorry see my bottom every single angle is looking sort of full and luscious just need some of those gorgeous berries in this section here beautiful you can see John is just coming in with some holly for me I'm gonna pop the holly into the punch bowl with the roses and the last few of these beautiful florals here I can't wait for those buds to open so I think I'm rather happy with this maybe just a couple more berries on this side and I would say that those two arrangements are perfect I think less is more, and then what we can do is we can actually get tiny little glass bud vases and just fill them with tiny bits of holly, maybe some foliage, some berries, and if we have any of the florals left over, just to fill those gaps. So those two are done. Now I'm gonna start working on the punch bowl. But to give you a close up, 
Pink can be Christmassy. So as you can see, we've got those gorgeous berries, the large Grand Prix roses that I have pulled out. That They just look super, super beautiful. And then we have the gorgeous anemones. So a few of them are still ready to burst. We've got a few over here that are just slightly opening up. I just love the way that these roses look. They are so beautiful. Look at that gorgeous anemone up there. Anyway, Anyway, so these are done. I'm now going to pop you back onto the Fortnum's Chocolosses Biscuits. It is acting as the perfect tripod and I'm going to create a magnificent floral arrangement in the family punch bowl. As my mother says, they bought this from Argentina. Argentina, of all places. So my battery is flashing. I'm going to change that and I will be back. As you can see, I'm just spending quite a little bit of time just making sure that there are no gaps and that it's it's whimsical, it's loose, and it's just so pretty. I think with Christmas, things can get a little bit too red and white and just you know, same samey throughout the whole house. And with the dining room, we always like to make it look just so pretty. We are still Christmassy because we've got some of those gorgeous red berries. Then I went outside just to cut some foliage and I found these beautiful branches with very dark burgundy berries on it. And I think they look so beautiful. So with the combination between fern, a little bit of pine, we've got these gorgeous little branches that I don't actually know what they are. You've got the anemones and the beautiful branches pink roses I think it's looking stunning I do have a few more anemones and so I'm just going to pop them in the gaps so I'm just going to spin it around I've got these very um, handy things at the bottom that are almost like cages I wish I showed you before I started this so I will leave it in that description box down below but they're like little cages that you can actually pop the stems in so they're not the frogs so you don't have the spikes but as I said it's almost like a wire frame and you can pop the stems in and it just means that those florals are staying in the exact position you need them to so I am snip snip snipping away I'm gonna spin 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 and just make sure that these florals are perfectly positioned and then we are going to take them into the dining room and see what it looks like all together then all we've got to do is place the uh, the mats the family silver on the top of it do all of the glasses i've got to pop the cutlery down um, all the salt and pepper mills and just make sure that everything has come together as we thought it would it's also super different to what we normally do. Every year we have a little bit of a different theme, but we always try to keep it super fresh and very, very pretty in there. But at the same time, to keep it very festive. So, I would say that that is looking absolutely stunning. I think this is actually one of my favorite floral arrangements that I've ever done. Mummy had a fantastic idea with punch bowl. See, this is what I'm saying, things are versatile. As long as it's watertight and waterproof, you can use it for a floral vase and it works perfectly. Got a little bit of a gap going on up here and then, oh no, he's a bit of a limp. <laughs> We've got a tragedy on our hands. Right, these are going to look gorgeous once they're fully opened up. So I think I'm going to put him in pride position there. The only thing about anemones is that they are so delicate, so you have to be so careful just placing them within that cage because you can end up snapping that stem, which is heartbreaking because anemones are such a beautiful flower, but they're also rather expensive. So just be super, super careful with them. Right, 
I think I'm gonna go someone down here to make sure it goes with that rose. He's not gonna fit, I've actually cut him too short. What a nightmare. Okay, well that's not too bad. He's not completely lost because he can actually go into a beautiful little bud vase. Okay, well, I would say that that is finished. Now let's head into the dining room to place it onto the table and see what it looks like all together. Okay, ooh, bit heavy. It's time to finally pop it in the dining room. Oh gosh, I'm gonna make our way through. perfection so I'm going to just twiddle that around I think and pop it like that I think that looks so pretty what do we think mommy is that in the center no I think it looks pretty Very I like pretty. it I love I like it. it it's fresh and dainty and everything can get too dense and Christmassy at this time of year right I think we need to get the two the holly and the ivy vases and then see how it's come together. I do also think we might need to add a few bud vases as well. Okay. The florals are finally on the table. I love the little ones. I've got to be honest, I'm not wild about the centerpiece. I loved it when I saw it in the scullery. Don't you agree with me? Yeah, it, it just it actually needs to be a lot more dramatic. We need some higher stems in there. So I'm actually thinking maybe some rose hips or even pink lilies. So I am actually going to have to pop down tomorrow and get those. Um, so next step, placemat. So let's finish the rest of the table because I think it's going to come together beautifully. So I've got the placemats. Let's lay the table. <laughs> Now all the placemats are on, it is down to the napkins and these are some beautiful French linen napkins. And when it comes to Christmas, trust me when I say the napkin needs to be huge. You need to be able to cover whatever beautiful dress you are wearing. So we have these enormous, just exquisite French linen napkins. Don't mind here. <laughs> Dobby. <laughs> My new <She's>, nickname. <laughs> she's bringing in the glasses for me. She's been having lunch, coffee, champagne. So are you going to help? No, she's just come for a good time. Right, okay, so I am going to fold these and then I've got a few little glittery numbers. What I think I might do is actually do the old beautiful and then we have these gorgeous little glittery napkin ring holders and they look like so so they're absolutely enormous and they are oversized and fabulous now i think that looks a little bit too large ignore me it's all about trial and error so i'm going to fold them into a square do you like them like that i do quite like that okay well then what we need to do is we need to make sure that the embroidery is in the middle of that triangle just so that you can see super up close that gorgeous embroidery. So I am literally just going to, like I said, pop it into, fold it and fold it again. They have been beautifully ironed, but we are going to do it like so. And then they look rather oversized and just gorgeous. I love it. <laughs> One of my favourite things <laughs> are our reindeer place cards. They are just so sweet and so dainty. And you pop them on each table placing. So I'm just going to pop these. I think I'm going to pop them sort of next door because we're going to have our Christmas cracker, I think, along the top. But I've also got the water glass to go down. So I think what I may do is actually do these at the very end. Let's pop down the beautiful, oh these are absolutely stunning, the St. Louis water glasses. You've seen these a hundred times, they are the dark green. Now I feel like we are going with quite a few different colours here, but the Christmas crackers are green, so they're going to tie in beautifully. So I'm going to pop this on a time lapse 
and I will be back in a jiffy. Green glasses are on the table and it is now time to place the crackers of dreams from Fortnum's. So let's get these out and I will show you a close-up because they are magnificent. See what I mean? I don't want to, I don't want to pull these bad boys. They are just so gorgeous. I love the velvet and the satin. And then they've got the combination of the gold and the green. It is absolutely exquisite. And they will tie in with the glasses beautifully. And then I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a lot more foliage to the centerpiece. I want something high. We need to have some dark green rich colors in there just to bring it all together at the moment. That centerpiece is really upsetting me. It's just not big enough, it's not dramatic enough, and it needs some dark greens in there just to make sure that it is super cohesive and tying in the rest of the table. See, this is what I mean. Sometimes tablescapes take a little bit of time. Oh, <laughs> there we go. A little bit of time to bring together, and you might pop something down and think that it will look beautiful, and you put it down and you're like, actually, it just doesn't work. So, it is all about trial and error. So, let's keep going. Okay, so I was really not happy. So I've decided to switch out the red candles for green. They're this gorgeous sort of like moss, dark green color. And I think with the beautiful velvet on the crackers and the glasses, they work perfectly. I'm so happy with these. Oh, perfectly in there don't want a wonky candle. Okay, what I'm going to have to do is actually cling film these. So I am back with the candles. Okay, I had a wonky candle in my Easter tablescape and you were all like, I couldn't stop looking at the candle. So hopefully, I would say that they are standing to attention. Right, I am feeling a lot better. I am, I am contemplating just getting the enormous Triffitt and having the full shebang. It's Christmas and I know my dad would love it, but my mum absolutely hates it. So I think we just put the full thing in and we put that somewhere else. I think we pop that there and that would look beautiful. We have this gorgeous mirror. We'll move that slightly here. Oh, there. <laughs> I always find that odd with the reflection. We could pop it there and that would look really pretty and then we pop the family silver in the middle. Hmm. <gasps> decisions, decisions. Right, we just need to pop some cutlery down, push the chairs back in and I would say... Until my mother comes back with the florals that she thinks are going to work, I think we're just about done. So. I'm going to go and get the cutlery for the dining room. I'm going to place it and then I will give you a close-up. Although it's definitely not done. It's not my finest piece of work, I must admit. I'm not in love with it. I think what I might actually do is put the family silver, break down the arrangement that I just made and pop them into posies and put them all down the table. Stay pending. It's about to get better! So I have decided to change it slightly. I felt heartbroken pulling apart the arrangement that took me ages to do. So I've actually placed it just underneath the painting and I think it looks beautiful. And again, with the pink roses, it's just cohesive and it joins in with the table along with the beautiful curtains, the walls and the fabrics on the chairs. And I've decided to put the enormous piece of family silver on the table. I just felt that we've got so many different pieces from my grandmother that I thought it would be lovely to have the main piece from my grandfather too and my dad will just love it. So I popped those tall pointy candlesticks on the top of it and it's one of those pieces that you can actually add to make it bigger or even um, take screw some of the orchids off of it and make it smaller. So I've gone with a little bit between the two. So hopefully my mother will be happy and doesn't think it's too much. Then we've got the gorgeous holly and ivy silver pot I've used as vases. And then what I've done, I've gone ahead and created some beautiful posy vases. I actually took some of the florals at the back of that arrangement 
out. If you are creating a arrangement that's going to be pressed against a wall, you do not need to make sure that all the other sides have florals in it. It's a complete waste of fresh flowers because essentially you're only seeing the flowers at the front. So I whipped those ones out and I popped them into bud vases and I've put a few beautiful berries in. So we're really incorporating Christmas. We've got some dark green from the foliage which is tying in the glasses and the gorgeous Fortnum's crackers. And I tell you what, I'm quite happy. It's not perfect, but as I said, I've got a few more days until Christmas. And so I'm going to add something large and dramatic to that floral arrangement. I'm sure my mother will have some great ideas as to add a few more little dainty bits to the table. But let's give you guys a close up so that you can see what I have created. Okay, so let's give you a close-up of our Christmas table in the dining room. So you watched me put everything together from the beautiful decorations to lots of reindeers. These are the beautiful little posy vases that I did. So it's all beautiful from foliage that I found and foraged outside with those gorgeous florals. We've then gone with the blush pink roses and as I said, as you can see, there are so many different pink tones in this dining room and it just ties it all together like the beautiful curtains and just that little hint of pink just makes it pop. I absolutely love it. And then we've got our little dainty trees which look gorgeous. The family silver that is dotted around. So these are the table settings. We've got our cutlery so I've gone with two forks, a knife and a spoon for dessert as we're not doing starters because Christmas lunch is just enormous. We've then got the enormous oversized napkins, a little sparkly napkin ring holder, the placemats and then solid silver placemats that just sit on the top, the gorgeous St. Louis dark green water glasses with the balloon red wine and white wine glasses and I just love how the green just ties in this extravagant and stunning Christmas cracker from Fortnum's. I hope you will agree with me that I think that the family piece of silver in the middle looks better than the floral arrangement. I just didn't think it was wow enough and it didn't have the drama or the height and with this people can still see across the table and have a conversation and I think there's just so much glitter and sparkle on the table it still feels fabulously festive. I've got a few wonky candles up there so please excuse and then I think in the evening when the sun sets and we can light the candles it will just look so atmospheric and pretty but of course I will come back and share it all with you. So that is my table. It has definitely been a labour of love. <laughs> And I've still got the table to lay in the kitchen, but you will have to wait until the next vlog to see that one. Mummy and I are going to tackle it this afternoon. So I have finally fallen in love with my tablescape. As I said, I've still got a few little teeny tiny bits to add that I think will just make it pop to perfection. So you're going to have to see that on the next vlog, along with the final festive floral walkthrough. I will give you the grand tour. But until then, I truly hope you guys have enjoyed this one and I will see you tomorrow.